All right, we're going to continue working with um, these exercises. So now we're looking at creating Venn diagrams. So um, it says uh, we're looking at three sets, F, E, and D. So I'm going to draw F, E, and D. I'm going to assume there's some overlap unless it says something about them being mutually exclusive. Um, this will be F, E, D, just kind of going in the order that that first one was presented. And so the intersection of F and E would be all of that. Then we're going to union. That means we're going to also include D. So that adds in everything that was in D. So we have that whole chunk. Um, I'm going to draw that same set again, looking at 26. We have F, E, D again. And again, you can label them differently, but just make sure that you have the same corresponding spot. So we're looking at D union with E. And so D union with E is everything in both D and E but we want the complement of that. So that's gonna be everything that is not there. So if I erase, that's what we're talking about, that green section. So we wanna intersect that with F. So really the intersection that we're talking about is just that section right in here. So another way that I like to think about it is if we start at F because we're intersecting, we know it's gonna be somewhere in just that circle F, but what is it intersecting with? Well, D union E complement means really don't put it in with D union E. So that removes the normal section here that we'd have of F. All right, for number 27, again, we're gonna draw the three circles. We have F, E, and D. And so we want an intersection of not F, like complement of F, so not an F, and not an E. So if we're not an F and we're not an E, that intersection, well, let's think about it. Not F would be all of this, but then not E would be all of this. So when we're looking at their intersection, that's gonna be everything that is here along with all the outside. But because we're intersected with D, we know that is actually the only portion that we want to be including. For part, or for number 28, again, fill this out, keeping them in the same spots. I just like to do that to be consistent. So we want to union a bunch of stuff. So we have D union with E. So that means we have all of D with F, but then we're union, I mean, sorry, D union with E, all of D and all of E union together, so all that. But then we also want to include F. So it's really everything inside those three circles. Now we're going to write a symbol for um, these ones. Um, we want that highlighted region, like how can we describe it? So for these pictures, I try and think about, okay, is it a union or intersection? Because I see that it's the middle kind of um, section here that looks like an intersection, and that's actually A intersected with B. So I'm gonna write A intersected with B. But then we also have this other portion over here to consider, which if I look at it, that's actually the intersection of BC. So if I'm going to put together both of those intersections, we'll write a little U. And so that's just one way to write it. There's other ways I can get you that same kind of shaded region, um, but that's how I would do it. So when I look at part um, question 30, it looks like really it's B. It's this chunk of B but it doesn't want to have A and it doesn't want to have C, like we're going to take those out. So to take those out, what are we actually thinking about? Well, that's really um, the complement. So if I put together A union C, so that's all of A union C, and think about their complement intersected with B, that would work. So for, um, anyway, and I just noticed I used that notation, the apostrophe, but you can instead of that um, apostrophe there, you could also turn that into a C. Either one of those work for to represent that complement, which again means not in their union. So for question 29, what we're looking at is, um, <clears throat> I mean 31. <laughs> they put the numbers in weird spots here. Um, we're looking at... Um, all of, well, it looks, well, it looks really, really, and again, I'm thinking intersection union, look at all that stuff. 
So at first glance, I'm thinking that would be like A union with C, and then we need to take off B, but we don't really want to take off B because we have that. So what if instead, let's think about it like, none of my erasers are working here, okay. What if we look at it instead as A, and then take B off of that. So we're gonna take A, and we're gonna intersect it with the complement of B. So that's a way of taking the B out. And then let's put into that all of this, which is C. So to combine that in, we'll just put a C in there. So we'll do that intersection really to take out that chunk of B, but then we're gonna union it to get back um, that little special section of B that you saw there. All right, and then the last one here, we have, looks kind of crazy. Um, I see that we don't want to include C here, but we do want a little chunk of C, so we can't get rid of all of that. So I'm thinking about doing it in a couple of parts because the thing that really is popping out to me actually is that middle section, which is A intersect B. So if we start with that little chunk, so we know we want to include that, I'm going to combine that with looking at set A, I want set A, but let's say I don't want to include C. So a way to write that is let's look at where A is intersected with C complement. Um, so if we union that together, that would give us, let's see if I can erase that a little bit better. Um, that would again be everything that is in, just this little chunk, everything in A, um, that is intersected with not C. So that would be this whole chunk. And so if we do the same thing for um, B, so B intersected with C complement, that's going to be everything in B um, intersected with not C. So everything not in C, that would be all of that chunk. And so you can see that only piece we're missing is that intersection of everything. So if we union it with the intersection of B, it doesn't matter that that's double counted, we would get everything inside that little bordered region. Um, so we're going to union that. So that's just one way. There might be other ways that you could think about it, but that's how I was thinking about it. All right. For number 33, we're talking about the cardinality, which is the number of elements in the set. So the cardinality of A, there are five elements, so we just write equal to five. Cardinality of B is three. A union with C, that's combining all of these together, but again, we don't double count. So I see four written twice. Um, so we know there's five elements in A, and there are two in C, but really the four is already counted, so I'm just gonna put a little one. So all together, that would be oh, six elements. For the intersection of A and C, we knew that there was the one element, that was the four. Okay. <clears throat> now we're gonna use the Venn diagram to do some of this counting. So looking at 37, we have A intersected with C. So A intersected with C is this region, which totals to five. And next, we're gonna look at B union C. So that's everything in C and B, all of that stuff. So if we add up all those numbers, well, first we have B, which is five, three, one, two. So that's gonna be eight, nine, 10, 11. So in that little section, we have 11, and then we'll add in these 12. Again, we don't wanna double count that intersection. So all together, it looks like we're gonna have 23 in there. For 39, we're looking at A intersected with B intersected with complement of C. So remember, complement of C means not C. So A intersected with B would be this, but we want to intersect with not C. So that's gonna kind of kick that part out. And so really, we've seen this kind of chunk before, we just want that little section. So that would be three. For number 40, we're looking at A intersected with not B intersected with C. So thinking about um, the A intersected with C, that would be this whole chunk, but we wanna intersect with not B, so we're gonna get rid of that. So you could see that all that we have is four elements in there. <clears throat> so now if we know that a set G has 20 elements in it, and a set H has 30 elements, and their intersection has five, let's think about a picture, um, G and H 
we know that they have an intersection that has 5 in it. Um, now, if this is set G and this is set H, we know that the total for G is 20. So we don't want to put 20 here because that would mean that G had 25 objects in it. And so we're going to have to take 20 minus 5, which gives us the 15. Um, for H, we have that there are 30 elements in there. Again, we already have 5, so we're going to write 25. So again, we got to keep in mind that intersection, so that way we're not double counting anything. So for the union, let's say in all the stuff that's here, some people just add 20 and 30 and say it's 50. But we got to take a, a, a out that double counting. So um, if I just add 15 and 5, that's 20 plus 25, that's going to be 45. But again, another way to think about it is I had a total of 20 and G, 30 and H, so that's 50, but I double count, so I take that 5 out. So 20 plus 30, you could think about that, but then subtract off that intersection because you're double counting, gets you the same result. So for 42, again, I'll draw a picture so we can really see it, but I have G and H, their intersection is 4. If the total of G is 5, then I could only have one more thing out here. So then you can see that whole circle G has 5. And then for H, the total is 8, so I'm going to have 4 in there. So when we talk about the union, if we add all that, we're going to get 9. But again, that's the same as if we took the total of G plus the total of H and subtract off that intersection because otherwise you would be double counting. So 13 minus 4 gets you that same 9.